So this is it, the finished product, 1970 Boss 302, painted all original. The red oxide overspray on the floor. Black on the headlight buckets. Black under the hood to that lip. And then the body color over spray on the floor. And the sill is done last. The black across there with the over spray over the green. Rear wheel arch area. And inside the trunk. So the red oxide has been sprayed inside the panels. Remember in the factory the whole car was painted in red oxide and then the body colour was sprayed over the top. So we're just trying to recreate what was done in the factory. Okay, we're back here the morning after. We just put the body colour on last night. You can see the uh, body colour overspray on the red oxide under the front fenders. Inside the front stone tray. and then the panel under the grill. Okay, so now we're at the stage of painting the doors. Now, I put new skins on these doors. Now, traditionally, they're not meant to have any sealer where the skin folds over. However, uh, but I don't like leaving much of a gap there. So what I've done is just got some sealer and pushed it in there really tight. So once it's painted, you will not really notice it. Now another thing, when these cars were built in the factory, the doors were painted on the car. Now, this is a bit of a problem if you ever got to adjust the door in or out, up or down. Um, and it'll leave a paint mark around the hinge. So, painting the doors off the car. Same with the trunk lid. It was also painted on the car, but now we're painting it off the car. So now the doors have been painted and you can't see any sealer. So here we are painting the last of the small stuff. So we've got the front headlight buckets. Um, it's easiest just to hang them. They are all painted body colour and there's a bit of black overspray goes on this section here but that goes on last. Uh, windscreen cowl, there's no stripes or anything on that, it's just all painted body colour. The hood, same thing, just all body colour at first. There's a stripe that goes down the middle. Rear end caps, all body colour. And on the boss, they're blacked out on the inside 
but of course that's last. And don't forget these little bits here. These bolt on inside the door where the window adjuster is. 69 and 70 Mustangs had them. Okay, so the next step is painting the floor. Now what we've done here, the whole body has been repaired, uh, primed, sanded, primed again, sanded, and just ready for its final sand. Um, so the last step, we leave that to last, because what we do when we paint the floor, uh, same as when we did the panels, it's um, just put the red oxide down and let the overspray just go over the outside of the car, doesn't matter, because when we give it the final sand, we just sand off the overspray. Now if you look closely under the car, you'll see all the seams, there's no sealer. Okay, so this, that phase is out of the way. We've got the red oxide primer on the floor. You can see underneath, painted the whole floor, all the nooks and crannies. It's the whole underside of the car. Painted inside the car. Now, of course, you don't see any of this, but it's just, just looks better. We've painted in the back here, and you will kind of see this. So when we paint the trunk area, the overspray is gonna come in over this, above this rear seat panel. This will all make sense later on once it's painted. Also painted, we've also painted inside the shock towers and inside the shock tower covers. And we've also painted all these front end parts, all red oxide underneath. So when we paint the engine bay, we just lean in from the top and we paint everything we can reach from this angle. That's how it was done in the factory. And also we paint the, this cow panel here. So some of the 69s early on, this was body color, but early on and all these 1970s, that was all black. And also we paint the outside black as well. Right, so we're back here. I've given the car the final sand and I've gone and sealed all the seams now, trying to keep it looking as factory as possible. Now in the factory it wasn't perfectly neat. It's not wiped flat, so I've just tried to replicate the factory look where I can. And then, the outsides of course were wiped smooth. And inside the boot area, we're just about to spray the spray sealer, but to cheat a little bit, I fill up the holes. Uh, the holes are a bit big to be filled with spray sealer, I find. So I've just put the normal seam sealer in there, and then we'll spray the spray sealer over the top. Now I'm at the spray sealer stage. I've got photos on my phone of how this is meant to look. At the end of the video, I'll put up some still shots and um, you'll be able to see an unrestored car, or photos of an unrestored car to see how it's meant to look. It looks pretty messy, but I try and do it a little bit neater than factory, but not too neat.
There we go. Not perfectly neat, but it's very similar to the factory finish. I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the other side. So now the green's done. You can see the frame rail and torque box. Just body colour overspray straight over it. And the floor underneath. And in the back, some of the fold down rear seat, some don't. But you will kind of see this area here, so it's just basically one coat. A bit of red oxide showing through. And in the trunk area, it's the whole thing, everything you can see. So this is it, this is what the underside of the hood looks like. Just body colour to that lip. And then the matte black painted over the whole inside. And with the trunk lid, similar thing. But because the outside of it's black, we paint all that edge there black as well. To that line, that's where the black stops on the outside. You'll see that later. It'll all make sense in the end. So this is inside the doors painted. You can see what I was talking about before. There's that hole and that hole there. So there's a rubber that comes up and then this bit here is exposed. So if you just paint straight across there, we'll make that squared off. You'll see that there, that black, so that's got to be body colour. Yep, so this is it. All the gravel stop. And you can see, point of the gun this way, and just sprayed it straight out like that. You can see the uh, old overspray there. Up in there. And this bit here protected it from going in the trunk. A little bit of overspray there. What a mess. But this is what they did in the factory, so this is what we're doing now. Right, so this is the engine bay phase. So what we've done here, it's all been sanded, and then put the red oxide primer in there. That's when we painted the floor, we did that. Um, red oxide down there, same thing when we painted the floor. We sand the hole outside. We back mask the body to the top of the dash. That line there, down to that ridge there. And that bottom lip there is painted black later on. It's a bit of overspray there, it won't hurt. This is all, none of this is seen. And then we seal these seams. Same as in the trunk, I actually filled that with seam sealer first and put the spray sealer over the top. Down there, down there. Normal sealer just in that gap there. In the bottom here, same thing, sealer along there. And these had like balls of sealer in the ends. Tried to replicate that look the best I could. Now when we paint this, with the black down, we don't actually paint uh, as much inside the shock tower. We get the black overspray in there. You'll see this later. And then, I think I mentioned before, this top bit here is black. Now, that other Mustangs up until, the, I think the early 69s, I think some of these were still body color. But I think the general consensus is just paint it black. Same as the engine bay. 
and also their shock tower covers. Red oxide inside, so them now just paint them just like that. So we still have the red oxide inside. Right, this is it, so the engine bay is done. You can see what we've done here. Just put the overspray inside. And when these were painted in the factory, all they did was just stand here and aim the gun down like that. So you can see all the overspray there. Engine mounts. Now, this is this phase of painting the textured black on the tail light panel and the filler panel. What we do is actually painting the trunk lid at the same time. With the satin finish paint, um, the additive works by um, flattening off the paint as it dries. Now, if the paint dries faster or slower, it alters the color. So if this trunk lid has to match the filler panel, um, they have to paint it at the same time in the booth. So there's that section there. I'll put the photos up at the end of how this is done, but that line uh, doesn't match up with the, um, the actual panel itself. You'll see the photos later on at the end. Uh, and this section here, there's that panel that sits over there, that filler panel. We mask to that edge. and mask off the bottom, of course. Okay, so these are the headlight buckets. Um, they're all painted, color sanded and buffed. And I'll put the uh, matte black finish inside, same as the engine bay. There's no masking or anything. It was just um, aim the gun at this angle, gently pull the trigger both of them and trunk lid bolts and generally a bit of confusion over these uh, some of these were done in slop grey but I've just done it the same colour as the engine bay uh, that's what this owner wanted that's what I've done the same with the grill support panel So this is another thing just unique to the 1970 Boss 302s. It was um, the black under the trunk and also it was on the trunk hinges. Now, when these were painted in the factory, the black overspray just went everywhere. It was just a mess. So this here is a happy medium. So the hinge was uh, body color to start with. And then I just masked off all the, uh, the remainder of the trunk and just put the black overspray down there, like so. Yes, so now if I mask this, you can see what I mean a bit better. Um, we've protected all this area here, but it still has the original look up on the hinge without the mess. Now this is it, on the home stretch. So here's the hood. Um, it's all been colour sanded and buffed. Now we're just marking out the stripes. So you can find these dimensions online. I'll put up a still photo at the end of the video. Um, now, I can use the measurements, but it's always good just to have the actual stripes to go off to get the radius correct. And if you're lucky, you can find something that has the same radius. That's a good guide. And as for these here, instead of using normal um, fine line tape, you can cheat and just use um, off the shelf pinstripe. And I'm gonna find it does a good job because it's already got the exact distance um, that's even the whole way along that has saved you trying to run two lots of tape and getting them perfectly even, which would be pretty hard. So you just run them 
straight off the edge according to the measurements and then cut the corners and use the proper fine line tape to get the radius. And now we just uh, mask off the rest of the hood and away we go. So this is it, uh, painted about half an hour ago, then I just unmasked it. Um, just remember that the shaker ring is not textured, that's just the standard satin black.